Hello friends, this video on semiconductors part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 16 before going ahead with part 17. Let us now talk about the last application of uh, diodes that is a solar cell. So what is a solar cell? Solar cell is something which all of you are, have heard it. I mean it is a very familiar word. Solar cell is a device which converts solar energy into electrical energy. So if you think of the light emitting diode, it was converting the electrical energy into light energy. So in solar cell, it is the opposite. It is converting solar energy into electrical energy. So how does it work? So before knowing it's working, let us first look at its construction. How does it look like? What does it consist of? So basically, it has an n-type semiconductor that is a silicon it is was n type silicon is there which is placed above a p type silicon as you can see here so n type silicon is placed above p type silicon and p type silicon is placed above a metal contact it is some metal which is known as the back contact similarly above the n type semiconductor we have these metallized finger electrode if you see this metallized surface is there this is known as the front contact so that means if we look at the side view, it would look somewhat like this. The side view will look somewhat like this. This is N type, this is P type, this is a metal which is the back contact. This is again a metal which is the front contact. Right now here this is n type and this is p type so because of a potential difference which exists between the n region and the p region there will be an emf generated when solar radiation falls on this metal so when solar radiation falls on this metal an emf will be generated and this emf will be known as photo voltage and because of this photo voltage there will be a photo current which will flow through the circuit so now we will look at its working in detail but here the basic uh, principle behind its working is that pn junction generates emf when solar radiation falls on it right so you understood the uh, construction so now here uh, also since we are interested in more output power if we want more output power then area should be more where the light is falling so that more area is exposed to more solar light so that it can absorb more light now the working of a cellar's solar cell takes place in three steps the first is generation of electron hole pairs so what happens when light when the so sunlight or light of energy say h nu which is if greater than the energy gap of the semiconductor falls on it then electron hole pairs are generated right because when light of uh, energy greater than the energy gap falls what happens the electrons from the valence band can reach the conduction band as a result electron hole pairs will be generated then what happens separation of electrons and holes now when electrons and holes are generated in a pn junction then what will happen let us suppose electron hole pairs got generated in this pn junction now the electrons and holes get separated why due to the electric field of the junction the depletion region is also there and the depletion region has an electric field of its own. So when electron hole pairs are generated near the junction, they will get separated away from each other because the electrons will move towards the N side and the holes will move towards the P side. That's because let us suppose if this is my P N junction. Let us suppose if this is P and this is N and this is my depletion region so what happens when the, the electric field is along this direction so when electron hole pairs are generated electrons will move towards n side and holes will move towards p side right that is what will happen so in this case also same thing will happen when electron hole pairs will be generated here the electrons will move to the n side and the holes will move towards the p side 
Now, as a result, there will be the third step that is collection of electrons and holes. So, what will happen in this case? Electrons will be collected by the front contact. In this case, let us suppose electrons move towards N side. So, the electrons will move towards this side and the holes will move towards P, that means towards this side. So, the electrons will be collected by the front contact. This is the front contact and the holes will be connect, collected by the back contact. So, electrons collected by front contact and holes collected by back contact. So, what will happen? The front contact will have all electrons and the back contact will have all holes. As a result of this, there will be a potential difference between the front contact and back contact and this potential voltage, potential difference is known as photovoltage. So, what is photovoltage? Photovoltage. Photovoltage is nothing but the potential difference between the front contact and back contact. So now when an external, now what, what happens when an external load is applied, a photo current flows because now you have a photovoltage. So now if you apply an external load, what do you see? Photo current flows. So if external load is connected to these two ends, photo current flows. Right? So you understood the working of a solar cell. In solar cell what happens when light falls on the um, cell, electron hole pairs will be generated because light has, if, if light has energy greater than the energy gap of the semiconductor. So now what will happen, the electron hole pairs which are generated, they will move away from each other. Separation will take place due to the electric field of the depletion region. So the electrons will get collected by the front contact and the holes will get collected by the back contact. As a result of this, there will be a potential difference developed between the front contact and back contact which is called photovoltage. So this when connected to an external load resistance, what happens is photo current flows through the circuit. So this is how electric solar energy gets converted into electrical energy. So now let us look at the VI characteristics of a solar cell. Now in solar cell what happens? The photovoltage which we are talking about is nothing but an open circuit voltage, right? You saw that there it was not connected to any battery source or anything. It was just that object which was lying. No voltage source, no battery, nothing is used but still an EMF developed. So this is known as open circuit voltage. And the current which flows through the circuit is nothing but a short circuit current because when you connect this open circuit voltage through an external load resistance, you see that a current flows through the circuit. So that is a short circuit current. So basically in a solar cell, open circuit voltage gives rise to a short circuit current. So the graph which we can plot is somewhat like this. So th this, this doesn't operate under reverse bias. Okay, so here uh, this open circuit voltage gives rise to this short circuit current. So here the VI characteristics of a solar cell is little different than what we saw for the remaining diodes so far. But still we discussed solar cell because this also uses the same PN junction concept, right? So now you understand that why semiconductors are so important. Semiconductors have got a wide range of applications because of its own properties. Because in semiconductors, it is like uh, they can conduct in one direction if you make it, if you arrange them in the circuit in that way. They can not conduct also if you connect them in reverse bias. They can conduct more. I mean, if you want huge amount of current to be flown through the circuit, but the voltage should remain same, then you can kind of make, make it operate in the uh, breakdown region. So, since the variation of the current with voltage is so different at, in different regions, then that you can make it useful for many different purposes. So, here we end our discussion on semiconductor diodes because 
at your level this much of information is enough and maybe if you go for higher studies you will know more about all this however i have covered the basics of pn junction pn junction diode as well as the semiconductor diode so let us see what are the materials suitable okay this i forgot to mention uh, what kind of materials will be suitable for a solar cell material with high optical absorp absorption so that they can absorb more and more solar energy band gap should be around 1 to 1.8 electron volts a suitable band gap is very important because if the band gap is very huge in that case what will happen even if it absorbs more and more of solar energy it will never be able to overcome that band gap so and if it is not able able to overcome that band gap band gap is nothing but energy gap so it is same as energy gap some people call it that band gap some some people call it as energy gap so if it is very huge then you will never be able to generate electron hole pairs and if it is very less in that case what will happen as soon as a little bit of solar energy will fall on it it will immediately generate electron hole pairs so that immediate generation of electron hole pairs is also not good because in that case what will happen is that everything will happen so instantly that you will not be able to develop a photovoltage right so the band gap has to be a suitable band gap electrical conductivity that electrical conductivity of that particular substance which is used for making the solar cell will also play a role here that how much it can conduct and obviously the cost thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again